needs of the state and interacted with the people for a prosperous Punjab. He is also the founder of People's Party of Punjab. He shares the famous last name, but the same cannot be said about his ideologies. Dear Rotarians, I present before you a gentleman, politician and son of the soil, Mr. Manfred Singh Bhattu. Close friend, Kamar Sanduji, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for such a generous introduction. I have uh, actually read about the Rotary Movement and I'm here precisely to, to salute the movement and that is why I've driven 300 kilometers from Dadan village. I have crossed, I have crossed uh, the river Satluj at Harike Patan and uh, I'm reminded of uh, the hauntingly beautiful words of uh, one of the greatest uh, poets of the Indian subcontinent, uh, Sir Alama Iqbal, and I quote in original, Alama Iqbal, and this is uh, my tribute to the Rotary Movement. Aap likhte hai ki khuda ke bande to hai hazaro, bano mein phitte hai maare maare, main to uska banda banunga, jisko khuda ke bando se piyar ho. So, as a, you must have heard in the introduction, I was, uh, I pursued my passion uh, for history at St. Stephen's College and then I went on to get a degree in law uh, from a university in England. So I would, I'm actually a historian by inclination. I'm a lawyer by training, I'm a farmer by profession and I'm a politician by vocation. So I don't know whether, you know, my experiences, uh, in some of you razor sharp Rotarians, you know, would relate to my experiences. Uh, in fact, uh, Kamar Sandhu Saab is sitting here, um, and you know, you may think that I have some, because I, I was asked to speak about leadership, you know, and the challenges facing leadership, so you may think that I might have, you know, fantastic insights into strategy or leadership. But some of the adjectives which the press uses in describing me as a, as a, as a leader or a politician would be uh, sentimental, uh, unpragmatic, unpractical, honest, you know. And uh, I must confess, uh, most of them are true. And I think I must begin by actually, you know, this obsession and about being practical and pragmatic in India. I mean, this is one of the things which has dragged this country down because people think that, you know, and in this, this whole, uh, you know, that you want, you have to be practical in India, you have to be pragmatic. We actually tend to hide all our unscrupulousness, you know, in the fact that this is, this is how it is done in India. I mean, a lot of people ask me, why did you start the PPP in Punjab? Uh, you were the chief minister's nephew, you were the deputy chief minister's cousin, you were the finance minister, you were winning successive elections by ever increasing margins. What was the need? And when I tell them that I started this because I thought uh, I must give Punjab a better political movement, and people start imputing reasons, you know, you know, there must be an ulterior, ulterior motive why he started it. Maybe he wants a role in national politics. You know, people refuse to believe or concede that there could be an unselfish purpose, you know, for doing things, or which, which does not benefit me immediately. I mean, Mr. Sandhu sitting here, he started the day and night uh, TV channel. Uh, he, he, he stood up to the powers that be. There were many safe, practical, pragmatic exits which were offered to him. I know the kind of, you know, by standing up for truth, for standing up for what was right, the kind of, uh, uh, he was victimized. I think he, he took on personal losses. 
I mean, he could have easily taken the pragmatic, uh, the option which was open to him. But he stood his ground, and India is all the better for what, what he did. You know, what I'm, I'm trying to say uh, has been said more eloquently by speakers who, who speak better than me, who, who can explain things better than me. But there's a very uh, famous speech uh, which is doing the rounds uh, in the corporate domain, and that's Steve Jobs' speech on stay hungry, stay foolish. You know, sometimes foolish people have changed uh, the world for the better. You know, that is my feeling because when I talk about leadership, and when you, you know, leader is like a teacher. Leader is like a ma baap. And like ma baap, apne bachya ne samne koi katiya ganda nahi karde. Leaders, you know, need to lead. I mean, if I, I mean, as a student of history, I can tell you, Abraham Lincoln, when he abolished slavery, he, he, he could not, you know, he did not seek a consensus. He did not have a majority. He, in fact, manufactured a majority when, when slavery was abolished. You think Mahatma Gandhi, if he had gone around trying to create a consensus against uh, untouchability, you think he would have succeeded? But Mahatma Gandhi just went ahead, you know, what was right, what had to be done. John F. Kennedy, again, a great president of the United States, he, he knew he was going against public opinion when he uh, was trying to give civil rights to uh, Afro-American citizens of America. He was going against public opinion. He just went ahead. He just went ahead and, you know, and let people, let him, you think history would have judged Abraham Lincoln or Mahatma Gandhi as great leaders if they had just gone after consensus of what was practical, of what was pragmatic. So my, I think my first observation, and since you are all leaders, you're all leaders of men, you're all president-elects, you know, I think you just need to do what is right, go ahead, and uh, let history and let people judge uh, what, is, what was good about your tenure as, as presidents of Rotary Clubs, and give sentiment, sentimentality a lot more chance. And we need to understand that as leaders, you know, I mean, all my experiences, all my reading in life has been that the world has changed for the better when one has done something which is not in his own self-interest. There were, there's a small example, uh, uh, Hontik, uh, there were actually two very young boys, both uh, 18 years old, both from Bushyarpur, both had finished their BA from Government College Bushyarpur. They both uh, migrated to Pakistan uh, in 1947 and they both went on, you know, they were both born in 1930 and they both went on to become the greatest poets of Pakistan, post-independence, the greatest poets from Pakistan. Uh, and one was uh, called Munir Niazi, and the other great Awami Shayan was Habib Jalil. And uh, there is a beautiful, uh, I mean, if you Google Habib Jalil, uh, he, he, he wrote wonderful poetry. And this is a Punjabi, small Punjabi Nazam of Habib Jalil. And he says, and this is for the leaders, and this is for Kamar Sandhu. And he says, Kujita Rama. कुछ भी अखियां सा, कुछ गल में जो गम था टॉक में सी, टॉक इस एक तरह का स्ट्रैप विच दे टाइ ऑन प्रिजनर्स नेक्स, यू नो एंड दैट इस एंड अटैच्ड टू हिस फीट, यू नो सम वेरी बोलेटाइल प्रिजनर्स, यू नो हु हु कैन नॉट बिहेव देम्सेल्स, सो इस एस कुछ दरामा, कुछ भी अखियां सा, कुछ गल में � they put the Sanu Maranda shout to this. I think that is, that is what leadership is all about. And, uh, you know, while uh, India did attain political independence almost 66 years back, 
and this was not without, uh, it was not easy, it was with a lot of physical pain, it was with a lot of British bullets and British batons and nowhere better to explain that than in the city of Amritsar, which was the unofficial capital of the freedom movement of India. And, uh, you know, it is, I am, you know, standing here after 66 years after independence and people still, you know, we're still talking about clean drinking water or hygiene or access to sanitation and what Gurjeet uh, Sekh Kosaab he tried to explain. I mean, how many people in this uh, meeting would have heard of Subhash Chandra Bose, Netaji? The fact that how many would know that Netaji had actually qualified to the ICS? You know, before the IS, you know, it was known as the ICS. And Netaji's father was actually the advocate general of Bengal. And Bengal was not Bengal. Bengal was Bangladesh, Bengal was Odisha, Bengal was Assam, Bengal was parts of Bihar and that was, and you know his father at least and both the, both the kids, Subhash Chandra and Sarif, Sarif Chandra, they both went to England, they both qualified for the ICS and Subhash Chandra Bose actually was fourth in the merit list. One of the very few Indians, you know you could actually count on your fingertips you know, three or four Indians who ever made it to, to uh, the merit list and Subhash Chandra Bose was one of them. He was trained as an officer at Halebury College, where, that's where ICS officers were trained. But for some reason, you know, it's a long story, I don't want to go into it. He did not want to serve the British. He, he, he gave up his job and you know, he could have, regardless of your age, you could have been 22 or you could have been 32 or 38. The moment you qualified for the ICS, you served 32 years in India. Netaji could have go become governor of any province, you know, uh, later on in his career. He could have had a distinguished career. He chose to fight for India's independence. And, uh, you know, it, and long story, I won't go into it. But the point I try to emphasize is that uh, one day, after he had set up the Azad in Forge, Netaji uh, was fighting against the British in Burma. He became, you know, six months of fighting, eight months of fighting, ten months of fighting. He became so weak, he was so emancipated, that one day he, he got out of his tent. You know, he was thirsty, he wanted to drink water, he had, he had malaria, he had dysentery. And Netaji came out of his tent to drink water from a pond and he was so weak that he could not drink water with his hands. He had to slurp water from that pond like an animal. There were pasu pani in there. ICS diya, nokaniya, chhatiya, te dangara mangu pani pite, te phir jake thonu te mennu e mulk milya hai. And you know, this is what is painful as a leader. That, and you know, we know Shaheed -e Azam, Agat Singh, we know about Chandra Shekhar Azad, you know, these are the few names we know, but there must have been thousands and thousands of young men who must have left their beautiful wives, their smiling children, their green fields and happy homes, so that people of India one day could live a life of honor, a life of dignity, a culture and a prosperous life. And this is painful that those dreams have not turned into reality, you know. And what I seek from you, you know, young people sitting in front of me, you know, people who have the right ideas, who have, you know, the right inclination, that we must turn the tide. You know, it is not going to be easy. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of honor, a lot of integrity to give back because in life one learns how to give. It is very difficult to give back. And I'm sure, you know, as Rotarians, you're already doing it. You know, the real enemies of India, you know, I can assure you, they're not Pakistan. The real enemies, you know, I read every day in the newspapers about what, what China is doing. The real enemies of India are not China and Pakistan. 
the real enemies of India are actually poverty, corruption, lack of access to decent education. And ladies and gentlemen, these are the enemies we need to give battle to. And these are the enemies whom the tide must turn, hopefully within, within our lifetime. When I was a finance minister of Punjab, uh, in my first uh, budget speech, I had quoted a, a great uh, Russian patriot whose name was Nikolai Ostrovsky. And Ostrovsky, is a, he's written a fantastic book. It's been translated into uh, about 20 languages. It sold millions of copies. And the name of the book is How the Steel Was Tempered. How the Steel Was Tempered. And Ostrovsky was a very young man. He was only 18 years old. He was fighting on, uh, uh, with the Russian in the Russian Civil War, he was wounded, he became blind, he became invalid, he became bedridden. But he, he wanted to carry on of being of use to society. You know, even though he's blind and bedridden, he started writing and he scaled the heights uh, in literature. He became a very well-known Russian author. And, uh, and it was one of his books, you know, because he wanted to give back to society. And one of his books was how the steel was tempered. And I quoted in my first budget speech, Ostrovsky, and you know, I, I'm going to quote him. Beautiful words, hauntingly beautiful words. And he says, man's dearest possession is life. It's given to him but once. He must live that life. You know, so that dying, he has no regrets of a mean and a petty past. And so that dying, he may say, all my life, all my strength was given to the greatest cause in humanity, which is the abolition of poverty from the face of this earth. I think beautiful words, and I'm sure uh, Rotary is part of giving back to society. And you know what, what, in fact, what pains me is this lack of leadership and what Mr. Sandhu talked about, lack of leadership, not just political <coughs> leadership, I see the lack of leadership in, in the academia, I see it in the universities, I see it in the press, and I see it in the families. You know, this, this acute crisis of leadership. And, and I, you know, I was one day reading a small story that one of the smallest creatures, uh, create, creatures created by God was a humble sparrow. I live in a village, you know, I see these little sparrows all around my house. Sabko kamzor janwar. And in Punjabi, you know, we say that there are two people, you know, that is part of Punjabi. Ki do chiza badiya kamzor ne, ik kudi, te ik chidi. Apni raksha ni kar sakde, apni hifazat ni kar sakde. But sometimes, you know, I see these sparrows once they have built up their nest and they have their eggs and their little chicks in that nest. Dubai, the Garmi, 
ਦੁਬਈ ਦਾ ਤਪਦਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਰੇਟਾ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਉਹ ਤਪਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਰੇਟੇ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੀ ਪਸੀਨੇ ਨਾਲ ਠੰਡਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਗੈਰਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਚਿੜਕਾ ਮੈਂ ਦੁਬਈ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਕਸੀ ਆ ਯੰਗ ਪੀਪਲ ਯੂ نو ਐਟ ਦ ਰਿਸੀਵਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਆਫ ਦੋਸ ਐਰਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਵੈਨ ਆਈ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਦ 에어ਪੋਰਟ ਐਟ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਸੀ ਥੀਸ ਯੰਗ ਬੋਇਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਗਰਲਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਰੋਟੀ ਦੀ ਖਾਤਰ you know they they probably taking a flight out of india like mr sadhu mentioned and i have seen these young young boys you know accompanied by their mothers you know from rural punjab and i have seen mothers sitting at the airport you know sitting at a curb sitting in car parks and mothers crying on the front of room their mama their khas metro ਮਾਮਾ ਦੇ ਥਰੂ ਬਰਦਾਸ਼ਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਮੈਂ ਕੋ ਮਾਮਾ ਦੇ ਥਰੂ ਜੜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਅਲੋ ਵੀ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੀ ਧਰਤੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ 100-100 ਮਣ ਦਾਣੇ ਪੈਦਾ ਕਰਦੀ ਓਨਲੀ ਓਨਲੀ ਲੈਂਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਿਚ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸਸ ਯੂ نو ਓਵਰ 10 ਟਨਸ ਆਫ ਫੂਡ ਗ੍ਰੇਨ ਆਵ ਲਿਵਡ ਇਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਆਵ ਲਿਵਡ ਇਨ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਆਵ ਵਾਸ ਐਜੂਕੇਟਿਡ ਇਨ ਇੰਗਲੈਂਡ ਟੂ ਟਨਸ ਆਫ ਫੂਡ ਗ੍ਰੇਨ ਤਾਂ ਮੇਰੀ ਸਮਝ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਧਰਤੀ 100-100 ਮਣ ਦਾਣੇ ਪੈਦਾ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਧੀਆਂ ਪੁੱਤ ਤੱਕੇ ਖਾਂਦੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਧਰਤੀ 20 ਮਣ ਦਾਣੇ ਪੈਦਾ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਧੀਆਂ ਪੁੱਤ ਐਸ਼ਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਮਸਟ ਬੀ ਡਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਿਸ ਲੀਡਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਯੂ نو ਵੀ ਮਸਟ ਗੈਟ ਦ ਪਟੇਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਸ਼ਾਸਤਰੀਸ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਗਾਂਧੀਸ ਬੈਕ ਔਨ ਦ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਸਕੇਲ ਯੂ نو ਹਾਫ ਯੂ نو ਆ ਹੈ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਪਰਸਨਲੀ ਰੈਡ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਲਾਲ ਬਹਾਦਰ ਸ਼ਾਸਤਰੀ uh shastri ji was the prime minister of india he was to actually go on a state visit to yugoslavia this is many you know and he was actually chairing a cabinet meeting and uh, lal bahadur shastri asked all the officers of government of india to leave the meeting because he wanted to have a private conversation with the, with his ministers and shastri ji told his ministers ki main badi dikkat mein phas gaya hu maine agle agle mahine ਯੂਗੋਸਲਾਵੀਆ ਕੇ ਦੌਰੇ ਤੇ ਜਾਣਾ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਲਲਿਤਾ ਜੀ ਹੱਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਮੈਨੇ ਵੀ ਆਪਕੇ ਸਾਥ ਜਾਣਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੇ ਪਾਸ ਟਿਕਟ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਪੈਸੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸਾਥ ਵੀ ਕੋ ਨੀ ਅੰਡਰ ਦ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਰੂਲਸ ਓਨਲੀ ਦ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਕੈਨ ਟਰੈਵਲ ਫ੍ਰੀ ਯੂ نو ਇਟਸ ਵਾਈ ਦ ਚਿਲਡਰਨ ਯੂ نو ਦੇ ਕੁਡ ਨਾਟ ਕਮ ਅਲੋਂ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ نو ਦੇ ਵਰ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਮੀ ਇਨ ਦ ਕੈਬਨਟ ਦੇ ਸੈਟ ਕੋਈ ਬਾਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਾਹਿਬ you know we have the cabinet we will override this you know this a cabinet decision will override the rules he said nahi ye to fir ek president ban jayega uh, why don't you pass a resolution that the prime minister of india will be given 6 months salary in advance so that i can actually buy a buy a ticket you know no way to save for this day they used to travel on regular commercial flights they, they never stayed in hotels they used to stay with their passenger I mean, these were the things. You know, when I talk about Patel, Patel was the Home Minister of India. He had the duty to integrate uh, 550 odd states, princely states, uh, as part of the Indian Union. And you have to believe me, Patel, and you know, they were not easy. You were dealing with these Maharajas and Nawabs, and, and Patel used to call them to his office. you know all these maharajas at midnight you know psychologically to overawe them and he used to keep them waiting and by that time it would become very cold in delhi in november december and so and so maharaja of jaipur used to be given an appointment at midnight and the moment he walked into his office patel used to kind of seem busy reading his file or doing something and keep him waiting and not actually keep a chair for the maharaja you know and after 5 minutes he look up and who are you and he says sir i am the maharaja of jaipur oh you are the maharaja so your 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 father was also the maharaja but there there is no women's college in the entire state of jaipur you must you should be ashamed of yourself your grandfather was also the maharaja of uh, uh, jaipur he used to play polo in england but there there are only four senior secondary schools in the entire state you you must you you must be ashamed of yourself you know this over all them and he actually made them sign the accession to india and he died in 1950 believe me 
he had 256 rupees in his bank account. The day he died at the Imperial Bank of India. No kothi, no plot, nothing. And believe me, the Home Minister who was dealing with 550 Maharajas could have asked for anything a man would want and that would have been given to him. Those were chapanja for the bank accounts. And Mahatma Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi was a barrister, you know, when Shamdas Birla, the Birla firm was backing Mahatma Gandhi. Entire expenses of the Congress party were being run by the Birla. Mahatma Gandhi knew that 70% of people in India did not have a kurta, never wore a kurta in his entire life. I mean, this is what leadership is. And I think this is what I think where we, and there's a lovely share by, I think, Kabar Mahinder Singh Bedi. And he says, Dil Bugzo Hasad Ranjur Nakar. Bugzo is to think ill of somebody. Hasad is jealousy. And Ranjur is again uh, uh, to think bad about somebody. So he says, Dil bugzo hasad ranjur na kar Ye noore khuda hai se de noor na kar Because God has given you something so beautiful Why do you want to think bad, ill of somebody? Why, don't, why do you want to be jealous of somebody? But the punchline is Ye dil bugzo hasad ranjur na kar Ye noore khuda hai se de noor na kar Na ahlo kameena ki khushamad se tujhe Na ahel is somebody who has no qualities You know, nothing to say for himself And Na, Kamina is of course our Kamina. You know, Punjabi Kamina. Okay, na, na ehlo Kamina ki kushamat se tujhe, kar jannat bhi mujhe to manzoor na kar. Jannat bhi mujhe to manzoor na kar. Okay, saanu ne chahiye. So, I think, uh, you know, I would sound uh, like a sore loser if I were to tell you ki Punjab jira hai. Rakh di peri bani peri. You know, you people are leaders of Punjab or Himachal or Kashmir. Thandi Rakh hai and Tusi te mein. You know, whatever time, you know, I'm not saying the whole day or but the part of your lives. I'm sure ki e thandi Rakh do in Uparoliye. Kai wari thandi Rakh de which we koi na koi Chingyari, Kushola, Kushola Bacha on that, so that this nation can come up and Ik cheese ta mein mannan nun tiyar, I hope I haven't taken too much time. Ik cheese ta mein mannan nun tiyar nahi ki ab par maatma ne a mere mulk di takdeer de vich gribi dikti hai. E par maatma ne, you know, is karke mulk grib ho gaya. मैं एक गर्म नहीं मानता कि आप मेरे देश का मुकद्दर हैं और परमात्मा ने लिखा है कि इस देश के मुकद्दर की एक देश अनपढ़ के चाहल रहूँगा किसी ने करे रोटी पकड़ी है किसी ने खाके हुंदे किसी ने सिर्फ़ छात है किसी ने सिर्फ़ छात नहीं है किसी को ले लाज कराने वास्ते पैसे हैं या किसी को ले अपने ब मैं ए मन्नन मुक्ति आदमी ग्रंथा चिल्लिया है कि जे थोड़ी आँखा दे सामने कोई कोई पाप हो रहा है कोई गलत काम हो रहा है तो इंसान का फर्ज है कि उस पाप को अपने हाथ से जाके रोको यू नो कि ये काम नहीं होना चाहिए पर अगर आपको डर लगता है यू नो कि मैं अकेला हूँ वहाँ बदमाश है आदमी ज्यादा है तो ग्रंथों में लिखा है फिर उस पाप को अपनी जुबान से रोको कि यार ये मत करो यार ये ना गलत है और आपको फिर भी डर लगता है तो ग्रंथों में लिखा है फिर उस पाप को अपने दिल में मैं बोल नहीं सकता मैं कुछ नहीं कर सकता उन दिल से बुरा समझो कि ये गलत है ये ठीक नहीं है पिछले चार साल तो जिस तरह से ये मुल्क चल रहा है ये ठीक नहीं है कोई नई सोच कोई नए लीडर आप जैसे बिलीव मी इंडिया इज गोइंग टू प्रोग्रेस 
with the cumulative leadership of people like you sitting there this afternoon. You know, who have the brains, who have the good inclinations. It is actually people like you who will progress this nation. So, I have to say that I have to say that I have to जो बंदा सच पे चल रहा है तुसी सच पे चलोगे तो उन्हें पता लगूगा कि सच पे तुरने वाले बंदे को कठिनाइयां बढ़ जाएंगी पर रब का वादा है इंसान का कि जेड़ा बंदा सच पे तुरूगा रब उस इंसान की मदद करूगा रब का वादा है इंसान का कि सच आज नहीं तो सवेरे सवेरे नहीं तो परसों सच ने सामने आए सो आई आस्क यू यू नो ऑल ऑफ यू कि सच पे तुरो तो ये सच पे नहीं चल सकते कोई मुश्किल है तो कटो कट जुबान नाल कह लो ये बंदा हक भी गलत कह रहा है ठीक बोल रहा है तो जे जुबान भी नहीं छिड़क दी है तो फिर दिल से कह दे कि इंडिया नीड्स बेटर लीडरशिप यू नो व्हेन आई स्पीक अबाउट चैलेंजेस अबाउट इंडियाज लीडरशिप बट हैविंग सेड दैट यू नो आई मस्ट स्टैंड ऑन अ पॉजिटिव नोट दीस आर वेरी एक्साइटिंग टाइम्स टू बी इन इंडिया यू नो दीस आर वेरी you know it's a great these are very exciting times to be a leader you could you could have been a leader of india between 1950 and 1990 nothing would have changed you know india's growth was at about 3% gdp growth india's population was growing at 2.5% nothing was happening for india for 50 years 40 years it's only after 1990s when india started clocking 9% growth the population growth fell from 2.5 to 1.5%. You know, people like me started dreaming dreams which my father's generation could not dream, which my grandfather's generation could not dream. But I must warn you that we are the make or break generation for India. In our generation, either India is going to make it or we will miss the bus. You know, I'm reminded of this great president of the United States, John F. Kennedy, and one of his beautiful speeches. And he says, every generation of Americans has had to give testimony of their loyalty to America and freedom. He said, the world is surrounded by the graves of young men who answered that call. He said, I will not shirk my duty, and my generation is not willing to change places with any other generation. We are not willing to exchange places now. This is the hour of maximum danger for India. And you are the leaders, and we will not exchange places. And oh, Jimmy, oh, Alama, Sabda, a big Mishur share, he says that our kafila is not going to be able to do it. From this self belief that we will make it, India will succeed, our kafila. अज़मो यकीन से निकलेगा मुझे यकीन है रास्ता यहीं से निकलेगा इट हैज़ टू कम कर मुझे यकीन है रास्ता यहीं से निकलेगा है बतन की मट्टी मुझे एडिया रगड़ने दे अटिया रगड़ने दे है बतन की मट्टी मुझे एडिया रगड़ने दे मुझे यकीन है चश्मा यहीं से निकलेगा आई थिंक संधु साहब इंडिया लाइक अ जिक्स ऑफ पा� you know, or Sridhar, who I'm sure in, you know, in, in your free time as a journalist, you must have tried to solve these problems. You know, it's, I think, just trying to get two or three things correct. You know, when you're trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle, so go then, keep going, and the rest just follows. I think the moment we have better leadership, the moment we, you know, have rule of law, I think one or two things, I think the moment we start investing in education, skill sets amongst the youth, I think India should, you know, be okay and we should be on the correct path. And uh, I, I just don't want to carry on for very long, but uh, I'm reminded of this great uh, freedom fighter from, uh, from Ireland and one of my heroes apart from Shahid Azam, his name, his name was Patrick Pierce and he was an Irish freedom fighter and uh, in 1916 he was sentenced by the Irish court for treason and he was executed. In those days in Ireland you were shot by a firing squad, you were not uh, hanged 
and when he was going, you know, at, when, when he was sentenced to death and he was being taken from the court and to the yard where he was to be shot. And this is a very famous words of uh, Patrick Pierce when he, when he told the judge and the jury in Ireland, he said, yeah. and when I, I start about five in the morning, I started at five this morning as well. So it's dark, there's an old man from my village, his name is Jamal Singh, he, he's an immigrant from Pakistan. And he actually walks on the same road as my house is. And he sees me every day for the last three years. And one day, you know, about three months back, he stopped my car. And it was still warm, so I had the AC going, so I pulled down my window. I said, uh, Anji Babaji, what can I do for you? And he told me, and I'm telling you, you know, actually I'm telling you what he told me. And this is something you must, you know, keep at the back of your mind. He told me, beta,